So we all have bathrooms, multiple bathrooms even, and if you wanna fix one up and renovate it, it is so expensive and they date themselves so quickly. When we moved into our home three years ago, this bathroom was definitely in the worst shape of all the rooms in the house and we probably should have redone it very first thing. But we didn't do that and it's three years later and finally the project is done. I can't wait to share with you the whole story, starting with a pink toilet and ending with a beautiful glass shower and so much more. So I hope you stick around for the ride. And then at the end, my husband, who happens to be a construction contractor, a handyman, he's very talented guys. I'm gonna have him come in and answer a bunch of questions for, that you guys had. And yeah, we'll just talk about home renovation and just how to be smart with your money and your time. So cozy up, grab your water, and we're just gonna sit here on the bathroom floor and have a little chat. There's like the remnants of a hurricane passing through right now, so yeah, I'm excited to have a little homemaking, home building chat with you all. And I wanted to give a quick shout out to Nolts Flooring. Those of you that are local, please use them. This video is not sponsored, but they did give me a code for you guys to use 10% off, and they also gave me a discount on our shower tile as well. So thank you, Nolts. If you're local, take advantage of that. 10% off of flooring and tile, that's a big deal. But yes, our home was built in 1979 and this bathroom was super tiny for a master bath. And here is our little master bathroom. But yes, it's as yellow as it looks. But you can see it's just a stall shower. We're ripping all that out. And look behind the door here. There's this teeny tiny closet. Like you can hardly even get a towel in it. And we're gonna knock that whole thing out and make this all shower, um, if you can envision that. Yes, we have a pink toilet in our home, surprise. Here's the vanity, we are going to rip out everything, like it's all getting gutted. So projects like this actually excite me. I just can envision in my head how much better it's going to look afterwards. You know the before and after are gonna be a stark contrast. So it doesn't usually bother me when you start with such an ugly, first slate. So I was very excited when demo day came around. But demo day is not what it looks like on TV. Let me tell you that much. So I'm standing here waiting for Josh to start demoing. You know, I'm picturing a sledgehammer crashing into the wall and the mirror shattering. And here he is. He's like, yeah, this is all it is. You just screw off the bar. You lift up the countertop. You carry things slowly out. He said, <laughs> what were you saying, Josh? You just make more of a mess. I mean, it's easier to just slowly take, unscrew the cabinets, take them off, and it's easier that way. So I guess instead of demo day, we'll call this deassembly day. That's right. <laughs> so much less interesting. It's still gonna make a mess, but it's just oh, less. Oh man. Of a mess. Anyway, we're gonna get out of here so that yeah, we're not around with all this dust flying. <laughs> So obviously you can tell the bathroom was not gonna be usable for a while. Also my husband just was pretty much working on this in evenings and weekends, so the project really drug out, but that was okay because we had a whole another bathroom just right across the wall there, the kids' bathroom that we renovated last fall, so we had that to use, and so that made you know, the timing a little better. But if you are going to be trying to renovate a bathroom and then get right back into it again, you gotta have your ducks in a row. You gotta have your framer, your plumber, your drywaller, your painter, your flooring guys, like all those people all lined up on deck, ready to go. What actually stalled us most for the project was our glass shower door. We couldn't order it until the shower was completed and he could measure the sizing. And then we had to wait six weeks for the shower door brackets to come in because I wanted gold brackets. But anyway, that's kind of why it's taken us three months to get this master bathroom project done. Okay, we are one week into our bathroom project, but we're past the demo stage and now he's onto his sanding, right? Is that what you're doing? Yep. Drywall putty and stuff. Look at this, guys. Marry yourself a carpenter and then you can totally design whatever you want. <laughs> we're gonna have two big mirrors on this wall and then we're gonna have two little niches in the middle here so we can put things in there and just soften things up, make it a little less harsh. He boxed out the shower. You can see we're gonna have like a big long, that's gonna look sweet, Josh, I'm excited. To put our bottles of our condiments, <laughs> our body products and stuff there. And I have a little ledge for when I'm gonna shave or whatever. This is all gonna be tiled in. All the doors are off too. Here they are propped up here. They're gonna get painted by our painters as well next week. This is always the part where I get cold feet when things are starting to happen but they don't look good yet and you're starting to second guess all your decisions. You go back to your Pinterest board and like reimagine things. So yeah, I was feeling really confident after seeing the progress, things were coming together in my head 
And then two days later, this is what happened. <laughs> so I just got home. The flooring guys have been here and Josh is like, you wanna go see our floors? What, you said you like them? Yeah, looks sweet. Am I gonna like them? I don't know. Yeah, you'll let's, like them. Let's go look. Nolts was here installing. This room looks so different. I feel like I'm in somebody else's house. I don't know. It definitely, it totally makes it feel like a different place. I don't know. Did we make the right choice? It looks kind of gray. What do you think? So I actually did decide after a couple days that I loved the flooring. It was exactly what I wanted. I was very happy that I did choose what I did. I'm really liking it. It's nice and light. So we did run that hardwood flooring from the bedroom into the bathroom. And this was a tough decision, but this is the one way that you can definitely save yourself a lot of money. And I think cleaning time later on, I mean, who wants to scrub tile? I don't understand. Tile is so hard and so cold. I did put a rug down, which you'll just see in a bit. But when we ran our planking into the bathroom, it saved us a lot of money, not only because we weren't buying tile for the floor, but also because then I didn't have to do a wood vanity to get the wood element in there. Instead, I got an Amish guy near me to make me a custom vanity built into the wall. It runs from one wall to the other and it's exactly to the sizes I want. I got to paint it the color I wanted to. I picked this nice kind of putty color. I'll link all the pink colors and everything down below for you if you like anything that you see. But yeah, I got my dream vanity that fits perfectly. There's no wasted space. It has the exact drawers I wanted to pull out. I have open shelving, everything I wanted. My dream vanity, like I said, I think I spent like $1,000 on this and the things I was looking at online were like 2,000 and they weren't even the perfect size. Um, that was the wood versions. The wood, ultimately, I have to admit, wood is just so much nicer. But it also, like, wood does go out of style. The different colors come and go. And with this, I can always repaint it when I don't like the color anymore. So that was kind of my thought process behind that. So I had this beautiful custom vanity that came in, and I had to pick out countertop for it. And guys, I recommend if you can go somewhere that you can actually see the big slabs, I guess that's when you're buying real stone. Maybe you can't do that if you're not buying real stone, which we are not, we did not, we did not buy real stone. But all I had to look at were these little squares and guys, it could have went so bad. It really could have. I picked something out that I thought I liked. It was basically white. There was a tiny little bit of veining in the one corner that looked just a little bit taupe, but I'm like, oh, this is perfect. It's going to look wonderful. It came in and it did not look anything like I was thinking, not at all. And I was like, what in the world? These veins almost look like a little bit pink. Are you kidding me? But praise the Lord, it was going in the bathroom that I was designing because it looks amazing in here. If you were going with any other kind of bathroom feel, it would not look good, but it looks, it looks like it's made for this bathroom. I love it so much. You can actually put underglow lighting underneath it and it shines through the stone or the fake stone, whatever the material is. Um, I'll have to ask Josh, maybe I'll put it on the screen here. Um, but yeah, I was very, very, it was a very happy accident. It could have been just such a bad mistake, but thankfully it all worked out. With picking out tile for our shower, I wanted something very classic, but also fun and a little bit modern, you know? I didn't, I know whatever I choose, it's gonna look dated in 10 or 15 years. I will have to put up the inspo picture here on screen and then you'll have to judge and see how it looks finished. But I was very happy with the results. I will say, definitely don't feel bad going back and forth into your tile store, wherever you decide to go. I went into Nalt's like several times and I just like just to double check my choices and you know I changed my mind a couple times. One thing that we did since Nalt's was giving us a break on the tile, we did decide to do a tile floor in our shower which if they hadn't said that we probably would have just done like an insert basin in the bottom because you can really save a lot of money on that. But um, I really love this penny tile that went in. I will say you don't want to pick penny tile if you don't want to spend an arm and a leg because penny tile is way more expensive than just like the big, more slab sized tile. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And I love how the tile has some movement to it because it's textured and I know it's not that rough European stone, but it's pretty close. So I'm dying to show you the bathroom, but first I have to style it and get it looking nice. So it is late in the evening, the kids just went to bed and I'm going to just be in my little zone here and get the bathroom ready. I'm so excited. So here are a bunch of little vessels. I got a Calico Creek. I thought maybe I'll put like Q-tips and cotton balls in those. I don't know where they're gonna go yet. I thought this could be cute with just like one little stem. Here's a whole bunch of stems. I also got a Calico Creek. I can link these, they're from Amazon. 
Um, I really love like the putty color of them. I think I'm only gonna need one, and then I'll use one of these trays. These are available on my website. I'm not sure which color tray I will be using. I'm thinking maybe just white. And then here's a little Dollar Tree frame that I picked up with a little watercolor in it. And I'm excited about this. It's from Amazon. I'm gonna put some clear mouthwash in it. I am gonna put eucalyptus in my shower. I'm very excited about that. Mm, I wish you could smell it. And then here are some bottles that I need to decant and put all of our shampoo and body wash and stuff in them. The bottles are from Amazon, they're just plastic. And then I designed the labels on Canva. And there's his and hers for Josh and for me. That way, you know, if I have such a beautiful shower, I have to have pretty bottles. So we'll see how this works out. I may actually have to end up cricketing something, but for now, I thought I would try this. We'll see. Down here's a collection of towels. They're all gonna go underneath here in my built-in. You haven't seen the whole built-in yet, but guys, it is gorgeous. There's a little sneak peek. Uh, my son brought up toilet paper for me to store. I got these baskets at Target on like a double discount. They are decently big, and they were $3.99 a piece because they were like, on clearance twice or something. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. They're not like super duper sturdy, but they fit under here and that was a little bit hard to find. So yeah, I'm very excited about styling this area down here and just organizing all the junk and like all of our products I hauled out of the kids' bathroom and they need to all be organized. He has cords and everything, it's just crazy. And then I don't know if you can tell, but like the mirror is filthy and it just needs a good cleaning. Oh guys, my pretty lamps. I, I, I can't wait to show them to you. When I turn the lights off, you'll be able to tell more what it looks like. But yeah, Josh got the blinds hung and all the other things. So that is exciting. Uh, stay tuned and see what these little guys are for. But I'm gonna turn on an audiobook and get to work. brand new room is the most fun for sure. You don't have to make anything work. You can just get things specifically for the room that you never had before. So that was super fun. Let me show you guys around. So here's the final look, complete with brand new doors, black hinges, black doorknobs. So the theme of the bathroom is kind of gold, concrete, and just like airy neutrals, I would say. I love this rug. It was an Amazon find. I will definitely link it below. It was a very good price. I love the colors in it, or lack of color almost in it. It's just very neutral. And yeah, I mean, you don't even miss the fact that we don't have tile in here because this rug really covers up the majority of the flooring. And then here is the star of the show, our long wall-to-wall -wall vanity. We actually had an Amish guy build this for us and it looks so exactly like I envisioned. He doesn't normally do like flush cabinetry like this. I just think it looks so pretty. I will put the color down below, but it's kind of like a warm gray or like a putty color. We have gold hardware with a little bit of a texture to it. The knobs also match that same texture. And we did have a problem with matching gold in here. There's so many different kinds of gold. So we did send a couple mirrors back till we got the right um, tone. 
And then I decided to put pendant lights in to kind of go with that bar feeling because we have like the bar going the whole way through here. And then we have pendant lights and they're so pretty. One way I saved some money was to use my Google Lens. I found these really pretty ceramic lights on Anthropology, I believe it was. And of course I couldn't afford them. They were also too big. And my Google Lens found these for me on Amazon. And then my walls are just like a off white color. Um, it's kind of hard to show you. They're not yellow as it's appearing, but here is the countertop that I was talking about. As you can see, there's way more veining than if I would just looked at like a little square inch of it. And it does have a little bit of a taupey pink color to it, but it looks really nice overall. I mean, you have to admit over here, I did style the holes in the wall with just some things I had from Cacalico Creek. And I have this little mini painting finished. I like that a lot. And this is a hand soap that's up here because then down here, this is from Target and this is from Amazon. I have clear Listerine in there of concrete so much, but then I also got aesthetic looking toothbrushes, Target of all places. Um, but yeah, I love that fluted look as you can definitely tell it's in the light fixtures and I repeated that throughout the room in a lot of different little ways. I also have a lot of concrete elements in here because there's gonna be a lot of concrete elements going on in our master bedroom once that's finished. And I like the juxtaposition of like kind of the glam gold and then the more rustic concrete, I guess you could say, the concrete elements. Over here is another little vignette with my skincare. My Tula stuff was running out and so I decided to try some pink packaged stuff. It's definitely not as good as Tula, I have to admit. But it looks cute there on the counter. Again, another concrete tray, more concrete details, and then just some dried floral. This was from Joann's of all places. Don't sleep on Joann's. They have a lot of cool different decor pieces. And then down here, I just have rolled up towels, Turkish towels, Brooklinen towels. And then in here, you can see all these baskets were $4 a piece from Target. And I have them all organized nicely. I got a gold trash can at Target. This vanity has the organization potential of my dreams. This will have to be another video, but yeah, just drawers where I can just drop everything in when I'm done using it. And then underneath the sinks, you know, there's some more space. Yeah, I can't wait to get my hands on this. Look for that video maybe in January when we're all in the, you know, decluttering mood. Uh, yeah, just nice big drawers. So there's no reason not to be organized, right? And I did not take the tags off of this little lamp yet, but I thought it would make a very nice little nightlight. And I love, again, that whole fluted feel. I thought that would be nice, like a warm glow at night, but I don't know. I have yet to decide for sure if I want to keep that or not. Okay, the toilet area I'm not really happy with, and I would love your opinion. So on the back here, I do like this. This is one of my concrete trivet trays that I sell on my website. Oh goodness, all the flowers are already shedding. But this is actually a hand soap that I got, and I just took the pump off the top and put some florals in there. And I thought this matched the aesthetic of my bathroom so well, and it smells good. It's just room spray from Target. Um, and I wanna get some artwork, I think, for the back here, but I didn't find the perfect thing yet. So I just put up this kind of arched it is a metal piece. I thought it'd be kind of fun to write little love notes for Josh and hide them in here. Nobody can really see them. Um, and I like that arched motif. We have that repeated in the wallpaper in our other bathroom. And so, I mean, it's okay, I guess, but it's just not my favorite. So nobody's really gonna see this area that much, but I will, so I don't know. This will be a work in progress. And then guys, let's move to the star of the show. She is definitely the most beautiful shower I could have ever imagined. This is a big glass shower door. I will open out, but it does go in as well. I hung up the eucalyptus in here. It smells so good in here. I wish you could smell it. Um, it's just gonna continue to dry as it hangs there. Hopefully not mold. It shouldn't get wet with the way I have it positioned, so we'll hope for that. Here's the um, glass gold brackets we were waiting for for like an entire six weeks, so I'm glad they came. Um, this hardware on the door is huge, and I feel like it really makes the space. It's gonna take me some getting used to to get used to a clear shower door. Josh is gonna love it, but I don't know about me. And then in here, I just have, um, this is, I, I use Tula skincare, but I love the packaging of this, and I thought it fits really nice with the aesthetic in here. Um, so we'll see, maybe I'll have to put some of my Tula stuff in the, in the jars once they run out. And yeah, if I'm gonna have this pretty of a shower, I have to have pretty packaging, so I did my own bottles of all my products. And this, if you guys know, I love, like, my shower time is my YouTube watching time, so I'll set my phone on the little stand. This thing is really neat. I will link it below. You can actually mount it to your wall. Um, I did not do that because I don't know if we need to. We're going to see if it works this way first. And if we don't like it, then, yeah, we can always mount it. And then here's a ledge on the back. I really like it. You can, like, put your foot up on here so you can shave. That was kind of the idea. I wanted to give you a really nice, good close-up of our tile. It has kind of movement to it. 
Um, it is like a subway tile, but we stacked it in the Kit Kat pattern is what they call it. It's just like up and down like Kit Kats in a package. And they're extra long. We just did white within a white grout, but that white grout has that concrete look to it, you know, with like the different tooth texture. Yeah, it just looks really nice once it's installed. And I will admit, tile is really hard to pick out. I changed my mind six or seven times, but wow, she's beautiful, I have to say. And here's a closer look at the penny tile. It's very small. We just did white grout and it has a lot of different neutral colors in it. I feel like I will still like it in years to come because it doesn't scream, scream a specific style really. Hopefully I can keep it clean. The verdict is still out on that, we will see. And here's a little Easter egg on the back of the door. We have our little towel hooks and then a his and a hers sign. So cute, those are from Amazon. I'm gonna go get Josh, tell him to come on up here. He's been working at his dad's place this morning. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna grab him and see if he'll take a couple minutes to answer some questions that you guys left me on Instagram. I guess it like that. Does it work? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. I have a lot of questions so settle in. So this is Josh. He mainly specializes in home remodels, but he does roofing, siding, windows, jack of all trades. He's nope. been in the industry for 14 years and he's 29. So you do the math. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't quite add up, does it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've only been on my own for uh, seven years. 2016. Summer of 2016 I started, so yeah. But he's been doing it since right. he's 15, so yeah. Yep. That's right. <laughs> so the first question I thought we could answer is, how do you agree on design? She says, my husband is a contractor and always is talking me out of my ideas. I feel you, girl. <laughs> yes. um, so yeah, we have we have heated discussions on design many times. Um, but a common sense, thats I, I'm the common sense, so I try to instill common sense in her as much as I can. Um, <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. Pretty yeah. much I have the ideas and then he shoots them down. Or he says that sounds right. like a good idea. Um, like he was like, what in the world? And I told him I wanted a vanity that went from wall to wall. But when we started pricing out, he's like, genius, that works great. Or like when I said about the pendant lighting, he was like in the bathroom and then I showed him some pictures yeah. and he's like, genius, let's do it. Like, yeah. so basically if it gets through my style choices and his common sense eyes, then it must be a right. go kind yep. of, right? When you're, when you're working on your own property or in your own house, don't, I mean, don't take too much thought in resale value. We're not planning to sell this house for a very long time. Counting pennies when you're doing a remodeling project is kind of pointless. I mean, you get what you want within your budget and make it what you want. Um, okay, great, because that was the next question. Someone wanted to know what renovations add the most value to your home? Because that was our mindset with our first home. We're gonna resell this thing in a couple correct. years. Yeah. Are we gonna see our money come back out of it? And I think we did right. make one mistake in our kitchen cabinetry Going um, with six thousand yeah. dollars, you know, custom cabinets for a little starter home was probably not the smartest thing. Yeah, I don't. Know. Was it six? I thought it was more than that. Yeah, but at the end of the day, we did live there for five years, and as small as that kitchen was, we were able with custom, we were able to get a lot more out of it. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, yeah, how was it? We might have spent a few thousand more. Again, when you're living in it, it it's it's what I mean, you want. You make it what you want, <laughs> and don't count. The hundred dollars um, that you're trying to cut corners and save here and there. Make it what you want. That's uh, good advice. But I was trying not to disappoint the 45, 50 year old Megan as well. You know, I didn't want to make too trendy yeah, decisions. Be, yeah, don't be lavish or, or anything. But being as is, I'm doing it with my labor. You can kind of do more on the dime. You yeah, know, exactly. Than what someone that has to pay someone else to do it. So. Oh, for sure. Josh's I mean, services are valuable. <laughs> If you're out there dating apparently ladies, my time marry is, a contractor. <laughs> yeah, there you go, marry a contractor. But apparently my time is free, you know, so. <laughs> no. It's very hard to get him lined up for anything. I did mention that this project took three months, right? Yeah. Okay, next question. How can you save money on a bathroom renovation? I've already shared about putting in a tile. What, what do you call it? The basin? 
oh, a fiberglass uh, basin for your shower. Rather like than a, tiling a shower it pan in. That you're not doing a tile floor. That'll save you, I mean, it depends the areas and obviously what for tile contracts. But most times it's gonna save you uh, between probably anywhere from three to five thousand dollars. Or um, you could just throw in a bathtub shower unit and that's gonna cost like even right. less. Right, now you're saving <laughs> lots. If you do the fiberglass walls and everything, that'll save you a lot of money. Again, I have connections. We were able to do tile shower for a lot less with um, being a contractor comes with perks. There's no doubt. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> By the way, um, we are very privileged living in Lancaster County. There is a lot of laborers, oh, blue yeah. collar workers. Big I time. mean, and you still can't get guys like you're booked out till February, March. Right. And like people are even in our area are struggling to find people to do the work. So I can only imagine in other areas. And that was Where a several. No yeah, yeah, that's several questions I had. I got this question a lot of times, but things to look out for to avoid getting scammed by shady contractors. Cause you definitely, I feel like you start compromising a little bit in what you want just to find somebody when there's not a lot of picking choice, you know? Yeah, that can definitely happen. I don't, I honestly, I'm not sure what to tell you. Reviews, I, I, I don't know because I'm more of the mindset where I don't take money up front almost ever on a project. I so should they be worried if somebody asks for that? No, because that's the typical way to do it. Most, Even the good contractors, the guys I know, they will ask for money up front. Um, now, often I will ask for money on the day that I start the job. Um, I might ask for some then. But paying ahead before the job is even started? Like, I bill my customers on a larger model project. I'll bill them multiple times throughout the job. That's on right. new construction additions, that's a little different um, because you're ordering a lot of stuff ahead of time. But on remodeling, there, and there isn't that much material. It's mostly labor. Um, I, I ask the contractor if you can pay them in steps throughout um, because a lot of times the stories are people, you, you pay them 20 up grand front. up front and then they disappear. Um, or they come in, they slop around, and they are ruining your carpet as they get to the location. Again, every day if you can pay in, in amounts throughout the project, and uh, if they do a bad job, you know, pay them for their work. But yeah. Oh, that's why I think it's so important. Word of mouth. You get so much work through yeah. word of mouth. Yeah. Recommendations. If you see your neighbor has a truck out front and they're on the roof roofing, you know, you, you often done like the whole street because people recommend you. Yeah. I, I don't know how you sort out contractors that are shady. I really don't. Um, I even deal with it with, with subs. I had a painter one time that he did one job for me and did well, went to the next job and it was just horrendous. Um, it was a horrible paint job ruined. I mean, it's ridiculous. So, I don't know. I don't know myself. Again, I'm not going to use that guy ever again. But. I know, and then that's money out of your pocket because you're trying to fix it on your dime because right. exactly. you want to be honest. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're in the local area, um, there are a number of contractors in this area that are good guys to work for um, or work with. Uh, there's one of the guys we use a lot for flooring work is Nolts Flooring there in Ephrata and Myerstown. And they... Do a, most of my projects, my remodels, I do most of them. The in-house flooring guys that they have are really good. Um, yeah, I felt like our tile guy was an artist. Like yeah, he, he definitely was. enjoyed it. So you can tell that people put love and blood, sweat, and tears yeah, into their work. Not everything was perfect in in yeah, here. Yeah, this is an old so, house. Right, and he he, a he did. There was a sag in the floor, and he he did he did amazing with it and and taking. And kind of hiding, being able to hide that. Yeah. So I know Nolts doesn't apply to a lot of you, yeah. but if you are local and you have a project coming up, use that 10% discount I was talking about. Um, yeah. Their service yeah, is amazing. Definitely. And yeah, now the prices can be amazing too because you get 10% right. off. Anyway, I know that doesn't apply to one a lot of One of the things I will add to this when talking about contractors and, and dealing with them, right now in this, this time, like one of the things is be patient with your contractors because... Getting materials, getting supplies um, is just so tough. I mean, it still is. I thought we were through the worst of it. And it seems like this fall, it's just been the supply chain. It's miserable yeah. again. I, it's, Josh. I, it's so pathetic. And I can't plan anything. And when you think you do have a plan and then something doesn't come in the way you thought it's supposed to or something didn't show up right, you know, every supply chain is dealing with horrible labor. And it's just, it's a mess. It's tough. So be easy on your contractors. That being said, I have some jobs that I got tight deadlines. And 
<laughs> hey, we'll make it work. Uh, we're going to try. The family but suffers a little bit over sometimes, this time. But, sometimes, yeah. Um, so would it be a red flag in a relationship with a contractor if they were like, sure, I'll get you in next week? Yeah, I think so. I mean, right now especially. I mean, if you need a guy um, to quickly set a toilet or something, that's one thing. But if you're right. like wanting a whole remodel project, well, mm, yeah. you're probably going to wait a while. Exactly right. It depends on the size of the project. If somebody, like someone, but again, it's people I know call and say, hey, I need a skylight replaced because it's leaking, I'm probably going to try and fit that in, you know. If you're calling a random construction company and they're going, yeah, we'll get you in next week, turn and run <laughs> in that instance. What renovations add the most value to your home? Uh, the expensive ones. <laughs> if you're looking to... Bathrooms and kitchens. That's but... the expensive renovations. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say windows and like a roof. Oh, stuff okay. Like that. If you're trying to have an efficient right if you're trying to save money with no like if you're going to sell your house in three years where should you put your money yeah again it's it's bathrooms and kitchens okay. are, the, are the things that people see and will pay for actually windows is on the bottom of the list really people will buy houses with junk windows but and don't care bathrooms and kitchens are so taste specific so that's um, a little tough not necessarily you just make them neutral um and nothing too thin yeah. like crazy if you're planning to sell the house don't do anything crazy put in white cabinets um, maybe a, a gray or something, you know, highlights. But no, but bathrooms and kitchens. But again, they're expensive. Having usable basements a lot of times are, are is huge. So right now in this current climate, is it cheaper to build new or to renovate a hundred year <laughs> home? What would you but do? If it's a hundred year home, it's gonna have. It's gonna. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd still probably renovate the hundred year home. I mean, I would too. I just love character. I grew up in a three hundred year old farmhouse. Parts of it were that right. old. I just you can't. You can't buy character. You have yeah. to like, yeah, keep, I, that's what I would do, but I don't see the situation. So you're saying at the end of the day, it's a wash, just do it when you want, or? Yeah, most times it is, it really is a wash. I, you're probably gonna, you might spend more money in that 100 year home if you're gonna really do it right and do everything. Cause do you pay for the house and actually renovate the entire thing? But most times a 100 year house isn't gonna need an entire renovation. Now again, building right now, in the fall of 2022 is, is cheaper now than it was spring of 21. Well, that's what somebody asked. Should right. they wait till wood comes down to do their stuff or is it pretty much where it's going to be and it's only going up? I, I would say wood prices are probably not going to get any cheaper. Um, they came down a lot. Not long ago, we were paying 20 plus dollars for a two by four. Um, and I think we're right around 12-ish. Right now, at this moment, when we're filming this, fall of 2022, right. you more worry about the labor and the cost of labor, but is that going to continue to rise too? Yeah, because there's is, less people doing it. Everybody wants to be a well, YouTube star. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's not, I don't, I don't know any other, I know one other guy my age doing what I do. How many contracting jobs do you have going at one time? Oh my goodness. Right now I have, it's actually funny. I was actually just thinking of this uh, yesterday morning or I was kind of counting in my head. I believe I have six or seven going right now. Which um, means we're waiting on six or seven paychecks. Uh, to a certain extent, <laughs> but it's a lot of it's half finished jobs. Like for example, a window job, where I have two window jobs that the wind I got a one window two a window in each job didn't come in, and so here I sit. They're half finished. A lot of jobs, too many, too many for yeah, wait more than I should because. But then there's like some summers where you're at one person's place like for two or three months and you like that, don't you? Um, actually no. I, I enjoy the, I enjoy the little stuff. I, I do. I like little projects. I, these big jobs are more headache. It's more subcontractors. It's more to deal with and not. It's more stress. So best cost effective paint brands. We actually had a lot of painting questions because I think that's something people are quicker to do on their own. And how do you, do painters mm. work cheap? Not really. They're kind of middle of the road. Yeah, they're not. They're not the most expensive. In, in in of the different fields, they're definitely not the most expensive. Like your tile guy cheapest. and your plumber, you're you're paying dearly yeah, for. Most times, even electricians, sometimes you you pay more for. You get exactly what you pay for in paint. You want to you want to get cheap paint. You can get it. It's going to be less durable. It's going to be. It's not going to cover as well. You end up putting more coats on. Um, I find go spend the money on paint. You buy an expensive paint. You, most times you, like for example, our bedroom, we put in, I think this is Benjamin Moore. Um, Pale oak. But the, the line of Benjamin Moore is called uh, Scuff X. It's called Scuff X. They only did one coat. We did one coat of paint on it. It was wonderful. So, yeah, it's like less labor, less coats of paint. 
you can buy a cheaper paint to two coats and you spend more money. Someone is buying a fixer upper, as in the whole house needs work, mm -hmm. pretty much exactly like ours. Right. But ours is livable, so I don't know how livable yours is. Um, and she says, where should she start first? How do you prioritize? I have some thoughts. So, I mean, yeah, which parts are not livable of the house? Um, but to me, kitchen is the starting point, but that's my opinion. Um, I We're doing a remodel right now where we're doing it in two phases, mostly because of time constraints. Um, they're wanting, bought a house, want me to fix it up, and they're moving in a month and a half, you know. So, kitchen is the first priority. Fix the kitchen up, get that livable, um, make sure they have a bathroom usable, and then from there on out, you, a bedroom doesn't have to be that nice. You can sleep. You can sleep in anything. Living room doesn't have to be that nice. Oh, it depends on money too. If you have the money to do the kitchen, do the kitchen. I mean, you can do little projects as you get the money, or you can save up for a long yeah. time and then do a bigger one. Yeah, you just have to decide for yourself. It's tough. It is. But I, for myself, I would say what's what drives you nuts the most. Honestly, maybe it, maybe it's your creaky stair steps. You know, who knows. Maybe it's your leaky windows or your, you know, I, I will say we just updated all the doors upstairs and it has made our home feel like a completely different home. Like doing right. the door, new, fresh, modern door doors and yeah. black doorknobs. Wow. Who wants to spend money on a door? But it made a world of difference. Dude. Do you have an opinion on barn dominiums? Barn dominiums. Oh, so I had to I, look it up because I didn't even know what it was. I'll have one someday. I'm going to have one as a cabin. Sure. Why not? What? It's perfect. Thought, it's not what I thought you were gonna say. Oh really? No, I do. Like, I'm not gonna live in one, but for for like a cabin up in the mountains somewhere, do a do a, a pole barn or whatever. Pole barn cabin? Absolutely, I'm all in. Just not in the middle of a cul de sac. Yeah, I'm not gonna. <laughs> common <laughs> sense. Uh, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'm not gonna build a barn to mini mountain in a neighborhood. But but hey, if I lived out in Utah or like you know oh, Colorado yeah, sure. or something, why and that was my primary home, I got why no, not? I got no problem with it. We'll end on this one. I'm not sure if this is a question for you or for me, but she says, how do you get your husband to start and finish projects? Oh boy. You definitely, you have to worm your way up to it. You have to talk about it for a long time first, and then you have to like plan what season. <laughs> for us, the real fire under our butts was always the next baby coming along. Like, well, we got to get this done before the baby comes or that done. And like, I always use that as like a deadline. Right. It's like a harsh deadline. It got to be done by then. I mean, <laughs> and you're the fire that make, keeps me running away from it, so... I, <laughs> yeah, you, you'd live in a bachelor pad if it I wasn't would, for me, so... I would, that's right. So, as a contractor, it is, it is tough to come home and work on your own house. It is yeah, the hardest thing to do. Work. And you're I, not getting paid. Yep, yeah, I'm not getting paid, and it's not enjoyable to come home and work on my house. It's, I don't have no fun doing it. It's the weirdest thing. I, not even on Saturdays. Nope. But, like, you were having fun making a little niche and stuff. You were proud of yourself. I, but, like, well, I still take pride in my work. And then he messed it up. I still don't enjoy it. <laughs> no one's ever going to know. You don't tell anyone. See if you no can figure one will out, ever know. See if you can figure out what's wrong with the little no box niches. No one will ever know what's wrong with them. <laughs> I will say what works to get the project completely done is just don't use it, don't move into it till it's completely done. Like this shower needs to be sealed yet, so therefore we're not using this bathroom yet. It's still brand new, um, which I look forward to working out all the kinks and like organization and like adding things. Did you see I put a little phone stand up there on the ledge? We'll see if that works I did out. I didn't see it. All right. I there. didn't install it on the tile because I thought maybe. I do see a whole bush hanging from my shower head. <laughs> He doesn't get the Taking eucalyptus. Taking a shower in the jungle. <laughs> hey, it smells so good. Come on, I always wanted to do that. Right. It's not going to get wet either, I checked. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little q and I hope it was helpful. I know, like, renovation decisions and stuff, they're, they're, it's money. There's stakes involved. There's time involved. And you can't really, once you've done it, you can't really just change your mind like you can with a paint color or something like that. So hopefully... Yeah, it was some food for thought. I'm pretty sure we all have yeah. little projects in the back of our heads that we want to get to at some point. And I would just say this too, when you're when you're doing a remodel project, get a plan together before you start. Well, I have one project right now where, the, actually both of them, that they have an exact plan of what they want. And it is so much better to have that ahead of time. Don't be figuring it out as you go. You don't know about your vanity. Get that stuff figured out ahead of time. Forget your colors, what you want, and then go with it. Oh, it's fun stuff, fun stuff. It's so rewarding too, because then you yeah. have more of a home than before, and yeah, I don't know, it is a blessing when you are able to renovate things. And I don't know, comment down below, would you buy a fixer-upper that was just livable but ugly? 
would you move into it and just live with it for a long time and just redo it room by room as you have the money because that's what we're doing that's right <laughs> next project is the laundry and the patio so stay tuned yeah. for those videos could be a year from now could be three months from now you never know thank you guys so much for watching okay see you in the next one bye everyone aaron judge is hitting oh <laughs> he thinks he can t film a video and watch aaron judge I, I try to break the break the home run do break their home run record i mean right now he's hitting See if he can do it. This pitcher is not letting him. They're not going to throw him strikes. Yeah, it's not going to happen. He's tied the record. He needs one more to, to get the American League record. Ah, he struck out. Ah. See, hey. he starts reaching. Anyway, there it was. <laughs> Don't marry a Yankees fan. Marry a contractor, but not a Yankees fan. <laughs> or any, any, any sports fanatic, I guess.